Hi guys, welcome to Piece of Code and welcome to this lecture. So in this lecture, we are going to see some concepts about destroying objects, garbage collection in Java, and the finalize method. Now, before going into this lecture, this lecture is going to be a little bit theoretical. Uh, so I will try to make this thing as much less boring as possible for you guys with a lot of visual explanations. So please bear with me because. This is uh, one of the important topics and some questions may come in the exam um, uh, regarding garbage collection and uh, destroying objects and also this topic is also very very important in case of a Java interview. A lot of questions also uh, get asked from this topic. So make sure you guys understand this topic in detail. Okay, I'll try my best. Now. Um, now that we have played uh, with our objects, right? We are we are pretty much familiar with objects. It is time to put them away, right? Because we are done with it. Now, luckily, Java automatically takes care of that for you. Java provides a garbage collector to automatically look for objects that aren't needed anymore. Okay, all Java objects are stored in your program's heap memory, or uh, you know, actually the objects are stored in the heap memory. Okay, that is important. The heap, which is also referred to as the free store, represents a large pool of unused memory allocated to your Java application. Okay, the heap may be quite large depending on your environment, but there is always a limit to its size. Okay, if your program keeps instantiating objects and leaving them on the heap, eventually it will run out of memory. Okay. So in the following sections, right, we are going to look at garbage collections and the finalize method. So the important takeaway from this particular point is that all objects are stored in the Java heap memory. Okay. Now garbage collection. All right. Now garbage collection. What is it actually? So it refers to the process of automatically freeing memory on the heap by deleting objects that are no longer reachable in your program. Okay. There are many different algorithms for garbage collection, but you don't actually need to know any of them because uh, those algorithms will not come in the exam. But what you need to know is that the system.gc, uh, that the system.gc method, right, is not guaranteed to run. So, and you should be able to recognize when objects become eligible for garbage collection. This is very, very important because the system.gc is not always guaranteed to run. That is the most important thing that you should remember. Okay. Now, uh, let's start with the first one. Okay. So, Java provides a method called system.gc. Okay. So, this is basically a static method. You will learn what static method is later on in our chapters. Okay. So it calls the system.gc method. Now you might think from the name that this tells Java to run garbage collection. Okay. But not, that is not the case. So it meekly suggests that now might be a good time for Java to kick off a garbage collection run. Java is free to ignore that request. It, it doesn't have to comply with that request. Okay. The more interesting part of garbage collection is when the memory belonging to an object can be reclaimed. Okay. Java waits patiently until the code no longer needs that memory. Okay. And objects will remain on the heap until it is no longer reachable. An object is no longer reachable when one of these two situations occur. Now you need to remember these rules that is applicable for garbage collection. The first rule is that the object no longer has any references pointing to it and all references to the object have gone out of scope. Now while we are on this topic, right, many of you can get confused between the concept of objects and references. Many of you might think that, okay, these two are the same things that we are talking about, but do not confuse a reference with the object that it refers to. So basically they are two different entities. So the reference is a variable that has a name and can be used to access the contents of an object. A reference can be assigned to another reference. Okay. Passed to a method it can be also be passed to a method or returned from a method. All references are the same size no matter what their type is. Okay, so remember this thing. 
so basically if you are going to go into a little bit detail about references and objects an object sits on the heap and does it actually doesn't have any name so it just an object just occupies some space on the heap it it doesn't have any kind of name therefore you have no way to access an object except through a reference so you can just say that a reference is kind of a map to the object that you want to access okay simple words so object come in all different shapes and sizes okay and consume varying amounts of memory okay an object cannot be assigned to another object that is very very important to understand and an object cannot be passed to a method or returned from a method it is the object that gets garbage collected not its reference okay so this diagram that you see on the screen may actually clear up a lot of doubts what i'm talking about now realizing the difference between a reference and an object goes a long way towards understanding garbage collection okay and i've tried to make it as simple as possible so you know it can be a little bit difficult to understand in the beginning but as you uh, carry on reading about it and exploring about it, it becomes a lot more easier now the new operator that you see right and many other facets of the java language is actually really really important to understand so the as we all know that the new operator is actually used to create an object and a reference actually holds an object so as i have already told you you can just consider the reference as kind of a map to an object okay now let's let's look at an example so this kind of question may come into an exam so let us see so basically look at this code and see if you can figure out when each object becomes first eligible for garbage collection and i've also uh, attached a couple of figures which will make it easier let us discuss about it right so when you get asked a question about garbage collection on the exam um i recommend right that you draw what's going on okay because uh, you will understand uh, what is happening in the background so there's a lot to keep track of in your head and it's easily uh, you can make a mistake you can make a silly mistake while trying to keep it all in your memory so i suggest you can draw some diagrams in the exam as well so let's let's look at this code and let's figure it out okay mm, so on line number 3 right we write 1 and 2 okay so basically on line number 3 we write 1 and 2 just the words so basically no need for boxes or arrows yet since no objects have gone into the heap yet so basically we just written it on line number 4 we have our first object if you see over here so what you can do is you can draw a box with the string a in it okay and draw an arrow from the word 1 to that box like i i have done it over in the figure now line 5 is similar draw another box with the string b and in this time an arrow to the word 2 right as you see over here at this point um, your work whatever you have drawn okay should look like this figure 1.2 that is over here this is what it should look like if you are trying it on your own with a pen and paper okay now on line number 6 right the variable 1 changes to point to b so basically what happens is variable 1 now points to b so what you can do is you can either erase or cross out that arrow from 1 and draw a new arrow from 1 to b like like we like i've done over here so on line number 7 we have a new variable so write the word 3 and draw an arrow from 3 to b so like here that i have done over here notice that three points to the what one is pointing right now and not it was pointing at the beginning okay this is why we are drawing pictures it is easy to forget something like that at this point your work should uh, look like this kind of stuff uh, this diagram so if you are not understanding please free feel free to rewind the lecture and start from the beginning finally cross out the line between 1 and b since line 8 sets this variable to null okay 
now we are trying to find out when the objects were first eligible to garbage collection that was our motive from the start on line number 6 we got rid of the only arrow pointing to a making that object eligible for garbage collection got it so when we reassigned that particular one from a to b at that point that object became eligible for garbage collection which was the a one now b has arrows pointing to it until it goes out of scope this means b doesn't go out of the scope until the end of the method on line number 9 so basically our object a became eligible for garbage collection but our b is not yet eligible for garbage collection because there are still three references three references pointing to that particular object so now you must be clear on the topic that uh, objects and references are actually different so basically an reference is just a map or a pointer to the object that's it and now you can understand how actually java decides uh, when to um, you know uh, garbage collect or when to get rid of the objects when it is not required okay so i think that makes a lot of sense right all right so if you have any doubts you can just put it down in the comments i can just uh, answer them all right now let's look at the finalize method so basically java allows objects to implement a method called the finalize okay that might get called so this is also a might get called because um you cannot force garbage collection on java using some kind of method java automatically decides when it needs to be done and this is really really important to remember okay so this method gets called if the garbage collector tries to collect the object if the garbage collector doesn't run the method doesn't get called simple as that if the garbage collector fails to collect the object and tries to run it again later this method doesn't get called a second time okay so in practice this means uh, you are highly unlikely to use it in real projects okay but luckily there isn't much to remember about finalize for the exam it doesn't actually matter that much if you don't remember about this much but please do remember about how java actually garbage collects or get rids of the object because a question may come like we saw in this particular example the finalize method may be may not be that much important but it is good to remember about it so let's see an example right enough theory we had a lot of theory let us see an example about this finalize method okay so let me create a class over here a minute okay new class and uh, let me name it as uh, finalizer okay and um, do i need the public static void main method let me think okay we need it all right no issues okay now let me just okay sorry my bad okay let's start this so let us let me write a method protected void finalize okay and um, so sys out i'm just going to say calling finalize finalize i think that that's fine and uh, in the main method what i'm going to do is i'm just going to say i'm going to create an object finalizer f equals to new finalizer okay i now basically um with that said this call produces no output when we run it okay so let if i run this code okay 
okay so you can see there is no output as i've already told you the reason is that the program exits before there is any need to run the garbage collector so while f is eligible for garbage collection java has better things to do then take out the trash con cons consistently my bad sorry so basically java doesn't have to take out the trash every time okay it, it has other things to do so basically this is what happens in this case so basically for the exam you just need to know that this finalized call could run zero or one time okay as we have discussed because it might run or it might not run okay so let's see another interesting example which will uh, you know clear your concept about the finalized method okay so let me do one more example and uh, so let's take private static list so this is from the collection framework so don't worry about it we are going to learn it, it in detail in our later chapters okay so objects equals to new array list um sorry okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to just say objects there is a add method in our list interface i'm just i'm going to add the current object to this don't worry about this this keyword also uh, just think about this as a current object now i'm just going to say one thing before explaining this further that do not do this sorry exclamation marks now remember finalize is only run when the object is eligible for garbage collection okay the problem here is that by the end of the method the object is no longer eligible for garbage collection why because a static variable is referring to it in this case you can see that it is a static variable okay and the static variable stay in scope until the program ends and we discuss this, this in complete detail in our variables in scope chapter so java is smart enough to realize this and aborts the attempt to throw out the object now for example suppose later in the program objects is set to null so this objects is set to null then good we can think that we can finally remove the object from the memory all right now java remembers already running finalize on this object and will not do so again the lesson is that finalize call could run zero or one time so remember that finalize can run or cannot run it might run or it might not run and if it runs then it only runs once so this is the exact same lesson as the simple example so basically it is easier to remember if you just can remember this very easy example okay so i hope this was a very uh, you know interesting chapter for you on garbage collection and uh, this actually is the last chapter in our java building block section okay so yeah thank you for watching the video i'm going to meet you in our next lecture have a nice day bye bye